Can I tell you something? I love a good ending. That might seem like an odd place to start, but Outer Wilds is in many ways a game all about capital T, capital E, the end. It's a game set simultaneously thousands of years after one apocalypse and 22 minutes before an even bigger one. You spend Outer Wilds exploring the ruins of cities, investigating the wrecks of colossal starships, floating dumbstruck through tableaus of death and failure. You see your sun explode into a supernova dozens of times. You get yourself killed in countless foolish and hilarious ways. With every lifetime, you get just a little piece more of the puzzle. With every death, your memories are flung back in time to start again. But no matter what, in 22 minutes, it all ends. Stay on the game's title screen for long enough, and even the words Outer Wilds begin to disintegrate, the stars in the backdrop winking out one by one. Now don't get me wrong, there's beauty in Outer Wilds, and wonder, and triumph. It's not a sad game, even if it gets kinda heavy sometimes. That said, in the end, your final act in the game is to bring an end to all of existence, collapsing everything that is and was and will be into a pinpoint of infinite possibility to begin all over again without you, without your home, without anybody you've ever known. The entire game leads up to this moment, tries its best to make you be at peace with the end. All of your fellow astronauts, even the disembodied presence of a traveler from a species whose footsteps you followed in, reassure you that you can let go. Your journey is over, and that's okay. There's an incredible irony in the fact that I and so many others wish we could play this game again, given the extraordinary pains it takes to impress upon you to take this in, appreciate your journey for what it was, and move on to the next adventure. So please understand when I say that when I booted up Outer Wilds again to play its new DLC, Echoes of the Eye, I had a feeling like I was walking over a grave. I thought the story was over. What more is there to tell? Well, it turns out... Echoes of the Eye centers around a ship, nicknamed the Stranger, built neither by your species the Harthians nor by the Nomai whose story you uncovered over the course of the core game. You discover it by coincidence. The Stranger is perfectly cloaked in shadow, invisible against the infinite dark of space except when it passes in front of the sun. That's how you find it, rocketing headlong into shadow. Inside is an overgrown garden. The Stranger isn't just a spaceship, it's a ring world with trees and marshes and a river. The centrifugal force of the ring spinning gives it gravity and rushes the water along through rapids to a tranquil reservoir held in place by an enormous dam. Outer Wilds already got so much mileage out of the Harthians, folksy, camping-like vibe that adding of all things whitewater rafting mechanics feels inevitable. To be fair, that's the hallmark of genius design, inevitability, like you can't imagine the whole without the part. The way that you needed every single tool from the probe to the signal scope to the flashlight in Outer Wilds was just like that. Mechanically, Echoes of the Eye is unmistakably Outer Wilds. I'm feeling the same rush of joy and exploration as I did before. I'm learning how this new environment operates. I'm charting an internal map of this new system of systems. So when I make my loops around the stranger, looking up at the curve of desaturated plants and artificial stone, why do I keep wondering what I'm even doing here? There's this concept in chemistry called chirality. The easiest way to explain it is to just look at your hands. Your left hand and your right hand are structurally identical. Four fingers, a thumb, an inward facing palm, but they aren't mirrors of each other. There's no way that you can turn a left-handed glove to make it fit on your right hand, but they're both hands. They're completely alike and yet irreconcilably distinct. The things that made the story of the Nomai and the Harthians so compelling is this exact relationship. 
They aren't mirrors of each other, they're chiral pairs, converging in purpose if not in form. The Nomai were possessed by a singular, almost existential need to find the eye of the universe. Even after the signal that brought them to the system went dark, they adapted. They built an orbital probe cannon to search the void for as long as it takes. They built with purpose, leaving behind permanent structures of stone and ceramic and steel. Even if they weren't alive to witness it, they did find the eye of the universe. Your species, the Harthians, meanwhile, are fluid, slapdash, improvisational. Half the time, your equipment is just repurposed Nomai technology, like your ship's artificial gravity or the warp cores in your probes. Just before your first launch, you're asked why you want to explore space. Like, it's an afterthought. The Harthians were going to build your ship anyway, just for the sake of it. Everything seems like it's built just for now, but it does work. The launch pad may be built of very flammable wood, and your suit might have been lovingly stitched together by hand, but it's all still enough. Following in the Nomai's footsteps, you're the one who completes their work and brings everything together. So, where do these newcomers fit into all of this? The Nomai and the Harthians complement each other so well that there isn't really room for a third party. The newcomers are a gap, an unreachable something shrouded in nothing, a shadow passing over the sun. These newcomers feel truly alien in a way that the Nomai didn't. Learning more about the Nomai felt so personal, so intimate. The dead had names, opinions, questions, doubts. You saw love blossom and hopes dashed so close in space and yet so unfathomably far away in time. The inhabitants of the stranger speak a language your translator can't parse, conduct obscure rituals you can't quite grasp the meaning of, and seem to lack names or, mostly, any clear way of visually distinguishing them. For most of the game, there's only one way you can interact with them, and it's hostile. In a way, that's more alienating than just not seeing them at all. I technically never saw a living Nomai, but I walked through their cities, followed their distress beacons, I read them tease and debate and console each other. I felt a lot of things playing Outer Wilds. Wandering the sun-bleached gardens of the stranger was the first time I felt lonely. The stranger's cloaking field blocks my signal scope. I can't even hear my friends anymore. You ever think about how terrifying the phrase, the observable universe is? We can't actually see the entire universe because the distances between us and parts of existence are so vast that light still hasn't reached us yet. We see only a fraction of all that ever was, and the scale of that fraction alone is enough to make you feel less than insignificant. Do you feel a chill on your spine yet? How about this? Light travels at a constant speed, and one light year is a constant distance. 9.461 times 10 to the 15th meters. The Earth has only existed for about 4.5 billion years. That means that the extent of the observable universe is this times this. Or to put it another way, you doing? This, give or take, is the approximate radius of the observable universe. It's also only about 2% of the whole thing. It's physically impossible for us to observe 98% of the entire universe from our present vantage point on Earth. Ever. There are doubtless tens of billions of galaxies whose light won't even reach the Earth before the death of our Sun. Empirically, we'll never see evidence that those galaxies even exist. Whether they do or not, we're left with an inescapable conclusion. We are unimaginably alone. Outer Wilds grapples with that scale, not just in space, but also in time. 
the Harthians encounter not one, but two advanced alien species in their home solar system, as physically close as they feasibly get, but they're still separated by incomprehensibly vast expanses of time. The Nomai encountered the Harthians before the Harthians were even sentient when they still lived in the geothermal pools beneath Timberhearth. Even so, the Nomai didn't take any more from Timberhearth than they absolutely needed. They left enough resources behind so that you too could one day start a space program of your own and join them among the stars. Across an unimaginable stretch of time, that little act of compassion makes everything that you do to follow in their footsteps possible. These newcomers, whatever they're called, tragically didn't have that luxury or that foresight. Like the Nomai, the newcomers came to the solar system looking for the eye of the universe, and they strip-mined their homeworld into a lifeless husk to build a ship capable of making the voyage. Also unlike the Nomai, they found the eye, and then they learned what it does. That it destroys this universe so that a new one can take its place. They panicked. Driven mad with grief and despair at having stripped their homeworld bare to build the ship which brought them here for this? They descended into orgiastic, nihilistic violence. They did the unthinkable. They burned down their temple to the eye, torched all records of their voyage here, left nothing behind. They did absolutely everything they could to cover their tracks. For their part, the newcomers built a computer simulation of their homeworld as it was before they destroyed it, and they prepared to spend eternity there. Then just to twist the knife in one final act of cosmic selfishness they built another ship a probe which would hide the signal of the eye of the universe preventing anyone else from learning what they knew only one brave soul manages to shut off the probe just long enough for the nomai to receive the signal which will bring them to the solar system and set off the whole sequence of events that brought us to this moment the newcomers capture them almost immediately and seal them away in a prison for all eternity for almost the entire rest of the history of the universe, that brave prisoner will have no idea if it was even worth it. The newcomers refuse to accept the end. Worse than that, because their ship would escape the supernova and coast through the cold, dead universe forever, they were willing to let the entire universe die out if it meant they could live on forever in a simulated version of the homeworld they destroyed. I'm reminded of a saying attributed to Louis XV. Après moi, le déluge. For the first time, I begin to understand what the newcomers are doing here. There's something just qualitatively different about the failures of the newcomers versus the Nomai. The Nomai had practical failures because of factors out of their control. Their plan might have worked if a freak accident hadn't wiped them all out in the blink of an eye. The newcomers have some practical failures in that they failed to conceal the eye from the Nomai. But more important is their moral failure in even attempting it. They fully intended to let the entire universe die so that they could selfishly stay in the same place forever, and they came within 22 minutes of getting away with it. They were given the same choice that I was. Or technically that I would be. Time is kinda difficult to pin down in Outer Wilds. On the one hand, the game treats time as rigid, mechanistic, a clockwork universe spinning through its last few gears before the end, unchanging from run to run. On the other, time is almost meaningless once you play for a few loops. You exist outside of time, in a constellation of facts and observations getting more complete with every lifetime. I, the alleged human playing the game, have gotten to the very last scene of Outer Wilds and I've already made the choice to end the universe before. The Harthian, it occurs to me, hasn't, by definition. For the first time, I know something that they don't. When I finish the game and close the cycle, I know that my little Harthian astronaut is going to have the courage to do what the newcomers couldn't. but. They don't know that yet. Do they feel compassion toward these newcomers? Pity? 
discussed. There is far too much in the newcomers that we recognize in ourselves to just condemn them. When we as players say we wish we could do all of this again for the very first time, aren't we tacitly rejecting the end in the same way as them? I mean, let's be honest, if we weren't put up against the wall by the literal heat death of the universe, would we have the courage to enter the eye? We're horrified by what the newcomers were driven to in their grief and their fear, but what really makes us different other than that we don't have a choice and they did? Outer Wilds begins with a forest and a campfire. You don't know yet that everything that you know will be destroyed in just a matter of minutes. It's still a scary thing to have to leave the only home you've ever known. You haven't the slightest idea what awaits you out there. Then you pull out your signal scope and point it up at the night sky and pick up the homing beacons of your fellow astronauts. You may unwittingly be the last Harthian ever to slip the surly bonds of gravity and hurtle into the dark, but whatever comes, you won't have to do it alone. That's enough. <laughs>